In this video, I want to address <clears throat> what online dog training isn't for. I got an email from someone who's a member of my site, and it's a long email. It's going to be a long, a long, ongoing dialogue. I mean, you, you're going to, I'm, I'm going to break it up a little bit and give some answers in between because I've read the email once already. Jan and I read it through. <clears throat> but it's, this is not a pretty picture. Here we go. We brought our Belgian Malinois Ranger home two days before he was eight weeks old. We lost our other two dogs one day after Ranger was born, one um, in July. We still have one of these other dogs. This dog will be 16 years old in June. We were experienced pet owners, but Ranger, our first working dog, we were not able to meet the parents because the mother left after she weaned the puppies, 12 of them. I didn't think this was a problem because the breeder is well known for breeding IPO champion Malinois. <clears throat> Mom IPO2, Dad IPO3. That doesn't mean they're champions, by the way. It just means they're IPO2 and 3. But I digress. We bought Ranger for protection as a pet. He helps less than my husband's PTSD. <clears throat> I'm going to wonder how he helps less than the, your husband's PTSD in a minute because I think it would increase my PTSD, what's going on here. And again, I, I applaud you for sending me this, this, this message, for wanting answers, and I'm going to give you answers here, right? I contacted the breeder when my trainers were outraged that the mother was removed so early and asked him when they actually removed her. He was angry and said the trainer obviously didn't understand another breed. We hired our first, so first of all, we don't, I, I never get the answer of when the mother was removed from, from the, the puppies. And if the puppies, because you say in, at one point here that the puppies were weaned, and if the puppies were weaned, then, it, you know, the mother isn't really there for much more. She can be there for some things, but a lot of working dogs are taken away from the mothers because they want, they, they don't want bite inhibition. They want more drive in the dogs and that. So if you got a dog for that reason, and this guy's breeding for that, he might be doing that for that reason, which wouldn't make a good pet. So we hired our first trainer when Ranger was about nine weeks old. She wasn't very experienced with the breed, only believed in positive training, click and treat, and gave him far too much chicken during our sessions. So that's already a problem. Right, because the dog needs structure, the dog needs some guidance, the dog doesn't need harsh corrections, but as a nine-week-old puppy, the dog needs to know some things. And although we can lure and shape a lot of things through clicker training, which I think is fine, or positive training, or reward-based training is fine, but the dog must understand some structure. So, um, However, she did tell us he was overly aggressive and we needed to work that out of him. Okay, so there is an issue because the dog is aggressive because it's a working line dog and she doesn't understand the breed. So she's thinking behaviors are aggressive, quote unquote, that aren't really aggressive, that are just part of a working line breed. We hired our second trainer when Ranger was approximately 11 weeks old. By the way, kudos to you for hiring trainers, right? That's very, very, very noble and very, uh, very good. So um, we sent him to a board and train with a police canine officer who is very familiar with the Belgian Malinois breed and uses balance training discipline. <clears throat> He has had two Malinois partners and trained several police units on how to effectively integrate and train new dogs. Okay, good. Not all police officers who have dogs are good dog trainers. That's why they have a training director, but let's say he is good. Let's say he's maybe he's the training director. When Ranger came home, he was a different dog. He no longer used my arms as chew toys. He listened to us and he willingly went into his crate. We also introduced my son's my adult son's eight-week-old Dutch Shepherd to Ranger when he came home from a board and train. Ranger was 13 weeks. Ranger was extremely gentle with the puppy and they played very well together. On Christmas Day, my son and his wife came to visit. They met Ranger once when he was younger, so we wanted to introduce them to in a controlled environment. We decided to do this away from the house and avoid potential territorial issues. My husband had Ranger on a leash to control the introduction and react if anything unexpected happened. Initially, Ranger was excited, came up to me and was happy. And he turned towards my daughter-in-law and son and lunged to attack. So there's red flag number one. I instinctively put my arm out to block him. My husband stopped him with a leash, but not in time to prevent my arm from meeting Ranger's teeth. So you don't put your arm in front of the dog. That's, that's bad. Um, he bit me pretty hard. He was about six and a half months old. We called our trainer and arranged to meet him in January to work on the increased aggression. We met with him again in January and February. Things were going well. Ranger bit the trainer, but we thought it was because Ranger was protecting me when the trainer reached for the treat bag. So that's what, now we're starting to make excuses, right? Oh, the, the dog bit this person because of this, and the dog is protecting me because of this. The dog has no protection training. 
So he's acting out. And he's acting out because there's lack of structure. And there's lack of structure because there's no respect for the person, which is you. So this trainer was able to put some um, training on the dog and the dog understood some basics, but because you weren't able to apply the basics or understand the basics or work with those basics um, and that communication, the training f fell apart. And by the way, I'm, you know, I've, got, I've got no skin in this game. I'm telling you that this, is, this goes down a, a slippery slope. It just keeps going so we're, and, and we continue. In March, we were, still, we were still struggling with aggression. Now, that you shouldn't be struggling with aggression. So this is where you need to talk to the, the breeder. Why is this going on? And I would ask the police trainer, because he would understand what this aggression is, more so than the clicker trainer, um, and, and follow his guidance. And again, I'm doing this video here because online dog training is a great thing. I mean, I think, you know, my site helps thousands of people. I know it helps thousands. We get so many emails. Um, my YouTube helps. 100, 190 plus thousand people we have on there. It helps countless people. We have videos with close to a million views. It's because I'm honest. I'm not going to sugarcoat this thing for you. I'm going to tell you the truth. And it might not be pretty. It might not be what you want to hear. But I hope that this, this video, I hope that this video, I pray that this video, that my message will get to people to prevent crap like this from happening. Please, please listen to what I'm saying. Share it with anybody who's thinking about getting a dog and, um, and then gets bewildered and doesn't know where to turn. And I know you're turning to me because I have the answers. And I do have the answers. But the answers require physical application that you're not able to transcend through an online lesson, right? Online lessons are great for obedience, great for relationship building, great for problem solving. But it gets to a certain level where that just can't be done. And this is that level. So... All right. Um, in, Mar in March, we were still struggling with aggression. Ranger started going after my son and his Dutch Shepherd. We thought he was too cramped in his crate and got him a larger crate. So now we're, we're all the slippery slope, slope of excuses is just coming all the way down. However, he became even more upset when we moved his new crate over to where the Dutchie's crate had been and moved the Dutchie's old crate to where Ranger's crate had been. So all these things are becoming excuses. He doesn't like the crate because it's too small. He doesn't like this because it's too big. He doesn't like this because it's over there. He doesn't like that because it's over there. This is what we call anthropomorphizing. We're anthropomorphizing every behavior in this dog in trying to understand why the dog is doing something when he's doing it because either one, he's genetically poorly bred, or two, he's genetically bred to be dominant and aggressive, both of which are not cut out for you. And if you're looking for a dog for protection, then you should have bought a protection dog, but you can't buy a protection dog and have it live with a 16-year-old little dog like you have. Okay, I digress. Um, and okay, then you say, um, we actually moved the Dutch Shepherd out of the shared room and let Ranger choose his preferred crate. Huge mistake. Why would you let a dog choose? It's not up to the dog to choose. It's up to you to choose. You make decisions for your dog. Your dog is not capable of making decisions. Dogs aren't capable of making decisions until we teach them how to decide. He chose the larger crate. Of course he did. But didn't want anyone else to have what we think he believed to be his previous crate, anthropomorphizing. No, slippery slope. Oh, he didn't want this. He wanted that. He didn't want this. He was upset about this. He, he was feelings were hurt because of that, right? And again, I'm doing this because I think you must hear the truth in these videos. You must hear the truth. And, it, you know, if you don't like me because of it, then you, you don't like me for the right reasons. But I promise you, if you listen to what I'm saying, I'm speaking from my heart, from having seen dogs be put down because silly and stupid mistakes were made. And it breaks my frickin' heart. We did this as a test to see if we could lessen his aggression toward our other dogs. It did not. Of course it did not. Because when you give in to the dog, you give in to the behavior. When you give in to the behavior, you give in to the aggression. We moved the duchy back into his crate until his new larger crate arrives. COVID impacted our ability to socialize Ranger, and we worried that a lack of socialization is one of the reasons for his aggression. He was aggressive before COVID, from what I'm understanding from, from what you're doing. Now we reached out to our third trainer. I'm going to tell you something. If the first trainer, the clicker trainer, was wrong, I'm going to give you that one. 
But then you get a second trainer who's a police trainer who's good with the Malinois, who knows Malinois, who's trained and handled Malinois, who's taking the dog on a board train. Why did you stop with that trainer? And I'll tell you what often happens with people is they don't get the answer they want to hear. The dog has been so anthropomorphized that they're not getting the answer they want to hear. So then they go to another trainer because they're looking for the same thing that you're doing here is you want the dog to decide which crate will make him happy. Well, you're trying to find which trainer will tell me what I want to hear. And that's not what you need. What you need to hear is the truth. And I'm telling you the truth here. This is, and I'm not charging for this, right? I'm putting this in public because I don't want this to be in a member section. I want this to be for any person who gets a dog that's above their level to hear this. And please don't get these dogs. Or if you get them, get them from a breeder who will take them back because we're going to get into that in a minute here. That's coming. Third trainer. She owns Dutch Shepherds and runs a daily dog care with playtime on Wednesdays. She evaluated Ranger and said he wasn't ready for the group environment. So we scheduled private lessons for with her to try to acclimate him to the kennel and have him comfortable working with her. When I told her, he started growling at me randomly. She told me he would bite me and I needed to change his perception of me and ensure he understood he needed to listen to me and not act out. And that's true. That is true. But I'm sure the first trainer told you that too. We had significant success until, and there's always an until, and there's always a but, the week after Easter. I drove home from Pennsylvania alone with Ranger and had no issues. The next day, while I was putting his collar on him to take him out, he turned and attacked my son who was sitting on a chair five feet away. My son is tall and capable of defending himself, but this attack seemed to come from nowhere. Ranger had been playing with him a few minutes before the attack. So this dog obviously has either a screw loose or decides what he wants to do when he wants to do it because of lack of structure. The following Saturday, we took Ranger on an adventure with us. While I did some errands, my husband walked and played with Ranger. Before we drove home, I went to Costco and bought, so now we're getting into a lot of details, which mean nothing, right? And, but, but I get it. You're very emotional about this. You're, um, your husband's very emotional about this. You're, you guys are attached to this dog. And these emotions are making you make bad decisions. And I'm just going to say that. It, it, it breaks my heart to say it, but you, you bought too much stuff. My husband was somewhat upset and I had to safely pack the stuff into the truck while we were allowing room for, for Ranger and a seat for me. It's, it's, you see, it's all these micro things that you're looking at that keep you from looking at the reality, which is the big picture of the behavior. You're looking at this like maybe this little thing is upsetting him or maybe bus packing the car is upsetting him. And maybe it is, but it's upsetting him as and the bigger part of it is that he's not mentally stable or, or capable of handling life because he hasn't been given the structure to do that. Maybe it's just a bad breeding. Maybe it's just a really genetically bad dog. But we're going to get into that because you said you went to the doctor. Um, I suggested putting everything in the front seat and I would sit in the back with Ranger. So now your husband's got stuff crammed all over him and you're, you're sitting in the back and he's playing a chauffeur. Um, while my husband packed the car, I walked Ranger, gave him treats. So he, again, we're going back to the treats. And the treat training is a good thing, but man, it's a crippler. It's a crippler because people always go, oh, I'll give him some treats. I'll make him happy. I'll do this. I'll do that. No, give the dog structure. Um, he was wonderful. He ignored people who were walking about and didn't growl at strangers when they walked past our truck and, he sp and spoke to us. So that's not a miracle right? That should be normal behavior. The fact that you're saying that to me means that you're actually surprised by it. That's not a surprise. Goofy didn't bite anybody today. Well, of course he didn't bite anybody today. Maya didn't, uh, whatever, pee in the store when I took her in a store. Of course she didn't. These are things you must expect and you expect them because of good training. Okay. Ranger got a truck, came in tail wagon, jumped on my lap, looked out the window and then laid down on the floor. About 15 minutes later, he came over to me and I started to pet him. I reached down for my treat bag without significant body movement, just my right arm. Ranger was on my left. So again, we're, you're over explaining things, which shows me you're over emotionalizing the dog. I get it. You're trying to tell me the details because you're going to say that, well, maybe Robert's going to think I reached really quickly for the treat bag and it startled my dog. That's too bad. It shouldn't startle the dog. 
If he's a good, solid pet dog, I should be able to do anything I want. Reach over him. Oh, sorry, accidentally. You know how many times accidentally? <clears throat> I, I bump Goofy with my leg. I'm lifting weights. I bump him with a weight or my or whoever. They're not worried about him biting me. Ranger was on my left. He started to growl. I looked at him and he started to growl louder and bare his teeth. He lunged forward. Now you're in the backseat alone with this dog. Your husband's driving. This is horribly dangerous. He lunged forward. I protected my face and he bit into my left arm in true Malligator fashion. He wasn't letting go. So I get it. Malligator, alligator, it's this, it's that. I mean, it's not, this is, my jean jacket protected my arm, but he punctured my hand. My husband stopped driving, removed Ranger, and I drove home with a bloody hand. We called our canine trainer. He came over immediately, and Ranger went, batch, you know what, crazy. I'm not going to say it, because then I can't, video can't go to everybody, and kids can't watch it. I want kids to be able to see this, too. Not my description. I wasn't there. The train, now, now are we back to the guy trainer, not the woman with the, with the, uh, with the, with the duchies? I don't know. We're going all, all over because you're bouncing like a pinball. Boom to here, boom to there, boom to here. And then you join my site and said, well, if we can't work it out, I don't want to keep my membership. And I understand that, right? I totally understand you don't want to waste your money, but you've wasted a lot of money with trainers. And then you come to me to join my site and say, well, you know, if, if I can get the answer here for 15 bucks a month <clears throat> and you ain't going to get it. Right? You're not going to get any trainer who has this answer. Any trainer who tells you they have this answer is lying and they're going to rip you off. This is only going to be solved by a trainer who can really get in there, work with this dog hands on daily, in and out. And more than likely, you, you're not the right handler for the dog, right? The, the person. And I'm telling you this, I don't know who you are, but I'm telling you this as somebody who's trying to do the best thing for you, I'm trying to give you the best information on this. Um, the, trainer, the trainer and my husband worked for two hours to calm him and get him under control. Eventually, he decided that they were in charge and calmed down. But then the trainer asked his nine-year-old son to walk past the dog. Ranger lunged to attack. I don't know one trainer in his right mind who would work with a dog that had just attacked somebody and after two hours asked, would ask his nine-year-old son to walk by. That's absolutely, categorically insane. He did not get near the dog as the trainer had him under full control. But why would, why? Why would you have a nine-year-old child walk by a dog that just bit somebody? This person's insane. Whoever, whoever that trainer is is insane. The next day, my husband and I took him to an emergency vet to find out if there was a potential medical reason for his increased aggression. First of all, a medical vet, an emergency medical vet would not be the right person to do this. You would need to go to a specialist who deals with um, more than likely brain things. Like you, I know here you said um, everything came back negative, no flea-borne illnesses, no parasites, et cetera. There's more to it than that. There can be, first of all, it can be behavior which can't be diagnosed. It's just a screw loose in the brain. It could be a brain tumor or something like that, which I doubt it is personally. Um, she, saw a fr she thought she saw a fractured leg, but the radios ruled it out. Ranger was limping, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so we neutered him on Friday, May 7th. And our vet put him on puppy Prozac to calm him down. I also sent his DNA sample out for, to see if there's aggression is genetic. Um, and aggression does run genetic in Malinois, right? It, 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 you can have it. It runs in pits. It runs in all dominant breeds. There can be aggression. Okay, so now you neutered him. By the way, neutering is not going to take away aggression. It's going to take away drive. Neutering does not stop dogs from being aggressive. Please get that through. This is a solution that Americans have bastardized because they think, oh, I'll just cut their, the dog's testicles off and that's going to make him just super friendly. Like all that aggression is just in the dog's testicles. It's not. The aggression is in the DNA of the dog. It's in the mind of the dog. You, you can take out the dog's teeth and say he's going to be fine. No, he's not. He's going to gum you to death. This is really important. Okay. We have owned Ranger since just before he was eight weeks old. And by the way, this is the why I'm, I'm only leaving the dog's name. I'm not leaving the person because I don't want to insult you. I really don't. I mean, I know this is hard on you, but you've got to hear the truth and you've got to hear it unsugar-coated with someone who's got nothing to gain. I'm not saying, oh, give me $10,000 and I'll train your dog because I wouldn't. I wouldn't do, do it for $50,000 because it would be robbing you of your money and giving you false hope, which is very cruel. He's now 11 months old, regularly growls and or attacks my son, his dog, and our elderly Esky. 
it's just anyway. I contacted the breeder because the behavior is cons is inconsistent with the Malinois breed. No, it's not. The Malinois can be aggressive. I have one. I've trained many of them. I've known many of them. They're really lovely dogs, but there can be aggression. And to deny that is to deny your own reality. This is not a discipline issue as he listens and responds exceptionally well, but no, he does not. If he was growling and I said no, then he would listen exceptionally well, but he doesn't. He growls and takes it to the next level and then he bites. That is not listening. That is, that is partially a discipline issue. Um, he responded to the emergency event even as he was growling and trying to reach her. He obeyed. He also obeys my son despite growling and being visibly nervous around him, but he doesn't because you just said here that he continues to, he regularly growls at or attacks my son. Now you're saying he obeys my son despite growling and being visibly nervous around him. He does not. You're, you're building yourself up a problem here. I can walk him off leash and let him run on our five acre yard and he recalls immediately without me using the shock collar button. First of all, you're using a shock collar, so it's wrong. It's an e-collar. You shouldn't be shocking the dog. And the fact that you're letting this dog run off leash is insane. It's completely nuts. The dog is attacking people, has attacked you, he's trying to attack a nine year old child. What if he gets off your five acre property and goes and attacks somebody? Or there's another, there's a little animal around, or somebody's walking their dog or something. This dog is the smartest dog I've ever known. Our problem is his unpredictable behavior. He's not that smart, and I'm going to tell you why. Smart dogs are compliant. Smart dogs figure out how they can have a good life. Now, if he thinks a good life is biting you and getting, you know, chewing you up and attacking other people and doing that, then fine. But that's, I, don't think he's, I don't think he's that good of a dog. And, you know, trust me, I think dogs are better than people. Most dogs I know are better than most people I know. And I have a hard time saying this, but when the dog's not good, just like when the person's not good, I'm the first one to say it. And I can say it about a Malinois. I can say it about a German Shepherd. I can say it about a Lab, a Dachshund. I can say it about any dog, just like I'll say it about any people. I don't pull punches just because it might not be politically correct. If it's a bad pit bull, it's a bad pit bull. If it's a bad person, it's a bad person, despite their color, their, their religion, their beliefs, their, their sexual makeup, anything. It's the core that you're going for. It's not the superficial things that you're afraid to say about. I know two possible traumatic events. The first was shortly after, this is a long, long, long email. And the fact that I'm addressing it shows that I really want you guys to be careful to know that some things are not gonna be solved with an online dog training. It's not gonna be solved with a quick board and train. If the dog is in this kind of a mental state, it needs to be with somebody who can manage that, which is not you guys. And I, I don't know how a dog like this can possibly help your husband with his PTSD. God bless him. God bless your husband, because if he has true PTSD, I would get rid of this dog and get him a really nice dog. Because if he's suffering from PTSD, it's a, it's a horrible, horrible illness. And I, my prayers are with your husband that he should have some solace and that solace should come from a nice dog that makes his life really, really easy. Okay, so you were saying when uh, these, these are traumatic events. He was riding next to my husband in our golf cart and somehow his leash fell under the front tire. I was driving, but there was some pull before he got the leash out. That's not traumatic, by the way. The second was on our boat when a friend's black lab and Ranger had some sort of an incident it happened so fast. We didn't see who did what and what transpired, but Ranger yelped and the larger dog didn't seem happy with him getting too close to her other than these instances have been none. And I would tell you right now that those incidents got nothing to do with this at all. We don't use physical punishment. We work with professional trainers. We walk him daily and allow him run multiple times every day. I bought him an obstacle course to develop coordination. So you're a really good person, right? You're, you're not in tune with this dog and with your situation and your, your potential liability for danger for your children, your, your, for other children, for your own self, for anyone. You're a, good, you're a good person to this dog and you're reaching out to me to get this advice. So I pray to God that you'll listen to this video. And I'm spending a lot of time on it because I do want you to hear this. I do not want to lose him, but if my son and I are not safe or fear for our safety, I'm not sure what my options are. 
Your options are, I'm going to tell you right now, not to keep this dog. I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. It breaks my heart to say this. I love all dogs, but this is not a good dog. And it's dangerous for you and your son because it's not going to get better. Because if somebody takes this dog and is able to get the behavior into the dog, to get the, communicate to the dog what the dog needs and kind of wash out all these other experiences and all this other stuff in the dog's mind, you will still need to step up and be able to take the place of that trainer. Like let's say you're first your canine trainer, that he puts the behaviors into the dog. Now you need to step up and come right in at that level and keep the dog there. And it's gonna be constant management. This will not be about training. This will be about management. I would like to re rehabilitate him and keep him. The trainer is willing to do an extended aggressive board and train, but I'm not sure if it will solve our problems. It won't. I do not believe it will. I could be wrong, but I highly doubt it. I'm rarely wrong on these issues. When I looked up the consequence of removing the mother's, the mother dog too early, I found an article that said, according to Sue, I don't know who this is, it's Sue Saint something or another, puppies removed with a litter too early are prone to be nervous with a tendency to bark and bite. And that might be true, but you're dealing with severe aggression. And the, the, the issue being removed too soon, they tend not to have the structure that the mother gives them. So it's like singletons have that. But if he was raised with 12 other puppies and you already said the mother was there through the weaning process, this is, should not be part of it. So you're overthinking this one again. Uh, they're also less likely to accept discipline, maybe aggressive to other dogs. But the dog is showing he's aggressive to you and your son and the nine-year-old son of the trainer. Ranger is almost always nervous and afraid. I know the breeder removed his mother. I can, we keep going into this whole thing. of the. I don't think that's the case. I don't like the breeder because of what I'm about to sh read here. But the other part I have no problem from except he shouldn't have sold you a dog that you weren't capable of handling because more than likely these are harder working line dogs and that's not going to be, you don't need a protection, I mean, buy a gun for protection if that's what you want. But I mean, a, a, a dog is, you know, it, it takes, it's a maintenance. Just like, there we go. I said buy a gun, but you should know how to use a gun. You should be responsible. You should be, do training and all that stuff. So if you get a dog, it's not just automatically protection. You need to know how to use it, how to, how to work with that. Um... The breeder will not help us any longer. I wasn't aware of this until recently, but he has a contract for his German Shepherd puppies and will take them back if there are problems, but no contract, no guarantee with a Malinois. And you should have looked at that, right? And I'm telling you this for everybody else who's still listening to this because it's a long video. You guys might not still be listening, but I pray to God you are, that you should be listening to this, right? And you should look that if a dog has an issue, will the breeder take the dog back because it's, the, it's on the breeder. Breeders I've worked with will take the dog back at any time, at any point in the dog's life, anywhere, anytime, no matter what the age or reason. So this is this is why I don't like the breeder. Not because of the, the mother being removed, because people do that. She, he may have leased the female to breed these puppies, and she weaned, and she went on. She went back to her owner. I don't know. But this makes this upsets me. I'm not assigning blame. I'm not assigning blame, and I'm. I willingly admit I made some mistakes, but I don't know what to do. He was a wonderful, albeit skittish, puppy with significant fear, aggression, and a guard instinct towards my husband. We have a rescue league trainer who will give us six lessons to help rehome him. No. I want to keep him. No. But I don't know if this is an option. I'm seeking your insight of op opinion and solutions based on similar experience. So the, my, the, I'm going to I'm going to wrap it up here because it's I've already given you all my all my intake input. The dog is not a stable dog, right? He might be a really sweet dog, but he's he's not he's not it's not good, right? Charles Manson might have a really nice side. He might he might you know love flower arranging, but he's not a person I want around my neighborhood or anything. This dog has this tendency. And the, the path you're going down is only going to get worse. The heartache is only going to get worse. The stress on your husband with his PTSD is going to get worse. The, the stress on the dog is going to get worse. If you can't find someone to take him who has experience in dealing with very tough Malinois, and there might be two in this country, three in this country, who would take a dog like that. And there's, there's a lot who have experience with it. But maybe there's a couple people who at this point would say, oh, I would love to have a dog like that and put him to work and do whatever. But a dog that has that aggression issue 
and has all these neurotic behaviors, and I'm saying not in a negative way, but he's fearful, he's insecure, he's this, he's that. You can't say, I'm going to take this dog and make him a police dog, because police dogs, do not they have to be super confident, they have to be uber confident. And he's not. So I can't help you with this. God, I wish I could. I wish I could wave a magic wand and sprinkle some pixie dust on your dog and save your dog. But no one is going to be able to do that. And no one's going to be able to do it and hand the dog back to you safely. And that's my take on it. That's my honest opinion. That's not sugar-coated, obviously. If you're still listening, God bless you for listening to this. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm always going to give you the truth. That's one thing you'll get here. Then that's the truth. Thanks for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Share this video so that more people will at least get the information they need to have a really good life with their dog and be fair to the dogs they have. And those dogs should be safe and should be fair to other people and other dogs. Thanks for watching.